Hi everybody, I'm James and this is my Spitfire. I thought I'd start off today's video showing you a few things I've been getting up to off camera. It's mainly been sorting out all the wiring in the car. It was a complete mess and people who obviously had no access to the proper wiring diagram or really knew what they were doing had tried to keep the car going in the past. So what I have done is restore all the wiring to how it was when it left the factory. Um, I've other than uh, I've got a few um, connector blocks which I still want to take out and put in inline splices but um, it's all been checked over and it's all nice and tidy and safe. So what I have been doing if we turn the ignition on so pretty much everything is working now. I have a proper working oil light which connects to um, the oil pressure switch properly now. There was a random wire connected to it before which didn't come all the way to the dash. The ignition light is properly wired to the warning light output of the voltage regulator. And if we turn the head, headlights on, my main beam light works properly as it should as well. I have also replaced the headlight switch with a proper two position switch like it came with. So first position is just the headlights and second position turns on the dash lights as well which I guess you won't be able to see in this light but I have been able to get all the gauges lit up which is great. Kind of useful for driving at night. Um, I've also got the blower working again. That's nice, a bit noisy but you really don't hear it over the engine. I'm halfway through getting the washer button mechanism all working, that's in there now, but um, I haven't connected the hoses up, so that still needs to be done. And otherwise, oh yes, if I start the car, go out as they should. You can see we've got oil pressure and I have a working rev counter. So probably if you look back in my videos you'll see that flicking around the place. Um, that was due to the rubbing of a of, um, part of the internal mechanism which shouldn't be rubbing. And um, yeah, that's all working now, so I'm quite pleased. Now I just need to get the car back together otherwise. So the rest of this video is a bit of a montage of me pulling the uh, rear hub to apart finally and getting the bearing replaced. So um, on with the montage. Okay, it's finally time to attack getting this trunnion off the axle. Away we go. So what I'm doing is essentially making sure things don't explode on me. Uh, it's a little crusty. So I'll put the um, outer flange loosely on just so it holds against the nut and the nut on. So when everything pops, it can't fly off. And I'll also be, oops, try that way around. So be leaving the nut slightly proud of the axle, if I can ever get it to go on, so that the center of the bearing puller can't jump off the axle. So, if you look, 
there we have enough room for the bearing to pull forward a bit. I'm going to seat this on the back of the trunnion itself if I can. Basically, I'm making sure I'm pulling on the trunnion hub housing thing rather than crushing the stone guard at the back. That's the idea anyway. Right. Show you that. Should be able to see in there. So we've got that in there and you can see the stone guard is behind the pour. Okay. Muffs. Oops. Okay. One free trunnion. Okay, you can see there there's some quite heavy marking in the axle. So we'll have to have a look at where that is and what's causing it. Right, now to clean this all up and take it apart. Ow. All right. And there we go. Need to figure out how to get these nylon bushes out, which do not want to move.
Yeah, this stone guard. It's a bit loose after my earlier attempts at getting the trap off. So I have a plan. If I got enough room in my vice, fit this in just. The socket is just a bit bigger to the point where the bevel is sitting on the inner lip of the stone guard. So I'm just going to keep compressing that little by little. holds in place. Some sort of piece of pipe is what's meant for this job, but I'll just take it slowly like so. Of note, this stone guard actually, once it's in place, forms the measuring backstop for the rest of the assembly. So there's an accurate measurement for the inner lip of this stone guard from the end of the axle. Six inches. Zachary. measure. Right. We have all that way to go. Okay. Axle's definitely seen better days, but I'll reuse it for now. Ah, 
Ah, got it. Just need to hit it at the right spot. Yay! Okay, so we have some grease. Have one nice clean hub. That's done. Okay. So first thing I need from in here. I'll pull out probably. Oh, here we go. Needle bearing. Happy with that. See it's sitting flush with that lip there, and it's still turning happily. Next, I want the seal for the back of it, just that thing. Have a look. One side you've got springs, and one side of the rubber seal looking from the other side that's quite a um, angled seal now it goes in so the springs are on the outside of the hub facing towards the diff so you can see there that side there with the spring holding the rubber seals in the side you can see the springs from goes on the outside of the hub facing towards the diff according to my little diagram put a little smear of grease around here to protect it and make it a bit easier to get it in We will press in with the vice because we can. Right, to help me keep this square, I'm just Squeezing it in a little bit and rotating it 90 degrees so the jaws of the voice assist me in squaring it up. Okay, now this does not go all the way in. And we can tell by the end of it which I can see it'll be a bit hard for you to see being right up against the needle bearing that it is all the way in and that's how much it sticks out so that ends up pressed against the stone guard a generous helping of the grease and here Before we put the bearing in, 
bearing in mind that, <laughs> bearing in mind, um, there you go, lots of grease in there, bearing in mind that this grease goes behind and in front of the bearing, the main bearing, that is, that's why there are seals at the other end too, there's our main bearing, okay, now we want to get into this, with our main bearing, and fill this with grease. hammer just to lightly press that into place oops sorry you paint okay that's now ready to go back together. The next thing I want to do is clean up the brake backing plate. So um, I'll get the wire wheel out and attack that. There is a mating surface on the back of this, so I will be careful not to scratch that up. But uh, generally I just want to clean it up and give it a bit of paint so it looks all nice and shiny. Okay, so that's cleaned up pretty well. Now I'll just um, use it with some rust converter just to tidy up the last of it. Not that I think you could get any of these. Back there, it actually has serial number still readable on it. Alright, I'm going to leave the video there for now. I'm off to take the other axle to the engineering shop because it isn't coming apart nearly as easy as the first one. In the next video I'll be putting that first axle back together again and hopefully getting it on the car. So if you enjoyed the video hit that like button, hit subscribe to see the next one and I'll catch you next time. Bye.